So what can we do as my generation, Gen Z, or everyone else who comes before or after us to take stock in where we are today, knowing that it's making us miserable and where we can go from here? I've made a list of about six steps that we can take into account. And I want to know what you guys think about this because I would love to hear your thoughts on each one of these six steps or if you have any other ones that you think we can embrace and take into account for ourselves on what we can do to live free, to live like a rebel from this miserable, upside down, horrifying culture that has become our norm in 2023 to instead live in a time and a place where we are happy and proud of the place that we can call home again. And that's not unique just to the United States of America. That's true all over the world for all of you guys watching as well. Step number one is simply to find peace in who you were designed to be. Maybe the biggest attack on truth is the attack on gender that has really crippled and choke held my generation into lying to ourselves and convincing ourselves that who we were designed to be was wrong or doesn't exist at all because gender really is just a feeling or it's a spectrum. If you are a young man, run towards the fact that you were designed to embrace masculinity, real masculinity, not a video game version of what that's supposed to look like, but standing up for what's right, fighting against people in power when they abuse that power, protecting the people in your life from what's evil and wrong and dangerous, embracing your own strength and taking care of yourself so that you can give back to others. Similarly, if you are a young woman, embrace your femininity. Don't be afraid to embrace your womanhood. Who you were designed to be as a woman is amazing, is the coolest thing that the world has ever known. The capacity that you have as a woman to grow and create life, to care for other people is the most punk rock, badass, incredible thing that could possibly have been given to you. Stop buying into the lies that you need to be subservient to a male CEO at a major woke company who's going to pay for endless abortions for you instead of the natural and innate desire to want a family. Stop believing the lies that your identity, your gender, your biology is wrong and that you should be taking testosterone, which you can just walk into a Planned Parenthood and walk out the same day with no history of gender dysphoria because you're going to be a lot happier if you're a man. Stop buying into the lies that womanhood is something that can be replaced by biological men wearing dresses and posing with brand deals and ad sponsorships from Tampax and Nike and Kate Spade and Bud Light and so, so many others on your TikTok for you page because who you are, who you were designed to be is beautiful and should be embraced and run towards and fed into and inspired and growing every single day rather than something that we run away from. Alex Padron in our locals chat says, masculinity isn't toxic. Embrace it. Facts. Masculinity isn't toxic. Uh, and I absolutely love that statement. We should be embracing that. And women, we should be embracing femininity. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging a reality that men and women are different. That doesn't make us unequal in society, but that does allow us to fully complement one another and lift one another up and push each other forward into something better than us trying to convince ourselves that we are all exactly the same when we're not. And I think that's just right in front of our face, right? It's hard for us to even deny it, but we're in the upside down where we're trying to deny that every single day. MRock on our local chat says the feminist message is toxic and hurtful to women. It is because instead of just embracing who we are and who we were designed to be, the feminist movement in America today is encouraging us to run away from every single thing that makes us a woman to make ourselves more like men and vice versa, by the way. They cheer on men who pretend to be women, who identify as women, far more than they even cheer on biological women. It's upside down. It's crazy. But step one of how you can live like a rebel in 2023 and embrace a more fulfilling and wholesome and peaceful life is to find peace in who you were designed to be, man or woman. Step two is not very 
controversial, I never thought until I started getting banned on TikTok for saying this, to take care of yourself and be mindful of what you are putting in your body, aka what you are eating and what you are drinking. Our culture today has created an entire false narrative about embracing obesity, about letting go of our health, and giving zero regard whatsoever to what we are eating and drinking every single day, to the point that the new food pyramid literally says that Lucky Charms marshmallows, Lucky Charms marshmallows are healthier than steak that eggs are terrible for you, that we should be lab growing our meat or creating meat alternatives rather than eating protein that was designed for us to eat, that human beings have been consuming for our entire lives? I don't know. I don't know. It's a little crazy. Not to mention that we've adjusted childhood development benchmarks because kids are struggling with obesity to levels that we have never seen before in human history. Obese models are gracing the covers of fitness magazines or women's health magazines. Notice how it's never men's magazines, by the way. They still have eight packs on the cover of men's fitness magazines, but women... It's all the obese people. Why? I don't understand. And that's not to say that you are a bad person if you don't take care of yourself or you don't work out or you don't care what you eat or even if you're struggling with obesity. But we should never be comfortable with where we are at right now. We should always be pushing to take better care of ourselves. Especially today when so many of our foods are riddled with toxins or endocrine disruptors and literally are poisoning us from the inside out because of pesticides or so many other chemicals that people like Bill Gates are responsible for putting on our food. I think it really comes on us. Our responsibility comes on us to be mindful, to do the research and take it upon ourselves to be aware of what we are eating, what we are drinking and how often we are working out. I had a pretty major kidney surgery in November of 2021, right the day after Thanksgiving, uh, because of a congenital defect that we didn't really catch until I was an adult. And luckily, they were able to save my kidney, which was awesome. But laying there on that operating table was a huge realization and wake up call for me uh, that you can prevent well into the majority of most things that are going to cause you ailment, illness, or disability later on in life by just taking a little bit of responsibility right now, today. It doesn't have to be reinventing the wheel. It doesn't have to be very difficult. But if you're not eating well and you're not working out regularly, it's time to start. Plus, in the very wise words of Elle Woods, happy people are important in society, right? If we're going back to Legally Blonde, exercise gives you endorphins and endorphins make you happy. And happy people just don't kill their husbands. They just don't. So if you don't want to kill your husband, hit the gym and take better care of yourself. Nessie says, but, but, but chicken McNuggets taste so good. Guys, stop eating chicken paste. If you're going to eat a chicken nugget, at least go to Chick-fil-A where it looks like a real chicken. Okay, just I'm sorry. You just got to do it. You know you need to. The feeling is there. <laughs> I don't need to uh, convince you too much of all of that. Step two, take care of yourself and be mindful of what you're eating and drinking. Step three, now it's time to start asking ourselves, what are we putting on our bodies, not just in our bodies in terms of what we're eating and drinking? I have spent the last six months or so, we'll do a whole big project about this on the stream, unpacking all of the results that I have found uh, about the number of toxins that are present in most of our cleaning, beauty, and personal hygiene supplies. And it is shocking. As soon as you start doing the deep dive spiral into all of this stuff, you will discover that the vast majority of the cleaning products that you have hiding under your kitchen sink or the lotions that you use or the face makeup that you put on your face or the shampoo that you use in the shower contain ungodly amounts of toxic chemicals that are endocrine disruptors, meaning they might impact your sperm count or a woman's ability to conceive children later on. Uh, they cause all kinds of skin irritations or are cancerous in many situations. They can be um, carcinogens and, and lead to a higher risk of getting cancer. Most sunscreens, which you wear to prevent yourself from getting skin cancer, can cause skin cancer because of the extremely high concentration of carcinogens that are found in your sunscreen. It is insane. I have several recommendations for where you can go 
um, to start doing some of this research in terms of what products are toxic and are not. But the first is to just download an app called Think Dirty. Uh, it's a little like black square with some color on the bottom is the cover picture of the app. And you can look up any shampoo, conditioner, lotion, makeup, cleaning supplies, whatever. And it'll tell you exactly what the ingredients that are listed in a huge long list in the fine print on the back of those products are and if they are safe or not to use. There is a reason that the vast, vast majority of beauty products, makeup, lotions, fragrances, cleaning supplies that we use in America are banned everywhere else around the world. And it's because they cause so, so much unhealthy consequences in our lives every single day. It's incredibly scary. But you got to do your due diligence and make sure that you know what you are putting on your body from a lotion perspective, from a skincare perspective, from a makeup perspective, and more. Um, HWD71 says, you sound like my doctor, LOL. See, this is so funny, though, because doctors aren't even telling us this anymore. This list of how we can live like a rebel today and take ownership and responsibility over our lives, doctors aren't even telling us this anymore. Instead, the vast majority of doctors are just telling whatever they're supposed to tell you to avoid getting their license taken away. It's crazy. It is insane. So step three, be mindful of what products you are using and where you can swap out for a better non-toxic alternative. Trust me, you will be much, much happier because of it. And you'll break out less and your skin won't be irritated as much and you'll just feel better. Step number four, it's time to start asking ourselves how we are spending our time. I'm a bit of an old soul. I've always been a bit of an old soul, but I've never really understood the huge push from people in my generation to live like they are insane and crazy uh, while they're in their 20s just for the sake of living like you're insane when you're in your 20s. Party really crazy when you're in your 20s so that you'll have great stories by the time you're in your 30s, right? And I watch so many people in my friend groups and the people that I've worked with and people in my generation go out of their way to go out and party every single night or every single weekend to hook up with as many people as humanly possible uh, so that they can just try a bunch of relationships on before they really know what they want before they settle down, even though I think it's probably pretty obvious what we want out of our relationships, right? Doesn't really take sleeping with hundreds of people to figure that out, but maybe I'm just wrong and a weird conspiracy theorist. Uh, they drink alcohol all weekend, every single weekend. They don't take care of themselves. They sit there and watch a zillion TV shows over and over and over again and just have their eyes glued to a screen instead of spending time with their friends and family. They isolate themselves from their friends and family. They vape all day long because it's the cool, fun thing to do, and they want to fit in with society. And I'm here to tell you that fitting in with society is the biggest, most overrated thing that you could possibly want in terms of how you spend your time in 2023 in America and around the world. Every single day, you should be asking yourself, how am I spending my time today to become a better version of myself, to make the people around me want to be a better version of themselves, uh, and to give back to the people in my family, in my community, in my country, and in my world. Because true satisfaction and happiness does not come from going to endless bars and clubs every single weekend. It does not come from toxic hookup culture and sleeping around with as many people as you possibly can. It does not come from doing whatever you want, whatever culture we've decided that that has existed in. I've never understood what that means, by the way. Uh, it comes from being intentional with how we spend our time. Read a book. Shocking that those still exist, by the way, I know. But read a book about something you've always wanted to learn about or someone that you really value what they have to say. Maybe turn off your screen and go outside. Shocking, I know, not a very common thing to do, but spend 30 minutes walking around the block with your dog or with your friend or significant other instead of sitting there watching another episode of TV. Clean your house. I came home the other day. I'm very bad at cleaning my house, by the way, but I came home the other day from like two months on the road and walked into my apartment and it was absolutely spotless and thought, wow, this is what it's like to live in a clean house all the time. Imagine if I spent 10 minutes a day doing this. The intentionality that we spend with our time creates unbelievably stronger, happier, healthier, more fulfilled versions of 
ourselves and we should run away as fast and as far as we can from every single thing that society tells us we should be spending our time doing living like we're crazy in our 20s just so we can have crazy fun stories later on down the line which by the way are never as fun and crazy as you think they're going to be but go outside touch grass see the sunshine be intentional with your time that's step four step five ask yourself who am I surrounding myself with? They say that your personality and how you view the world and your perspective on the world is a culmination of the five people that you surround yourself with the most often. That's it. It's a pretty intense realization when you sit down and really think about it. The people that you talk to every single day, the people that you interact with every single day, the people you go to work with every single day, those five people that you spend the most time with are influencing every single thing about you. When you look at them and their lives and how happy they are and the type of life that they are building and living right now, is that the life that you want to live? I've had to be incredibly honest with myself many, many, many more times than you guys realize and tell myself in the moment, this is not the life that I want to live how these people are conducting their time, what their moral code is, how they speak about others, what their faith life looks like. I don't want to live like these people do. And it's been really hard to cut myself off from some of those people, but it is the best thing that I could have ever done. That doesn't mean that I have hatred towards them or I think that they're bad people, but it's not the trajectory or the path that I wanted for my life. And instead, I had to go out and be intentional and find people who speak truth into my life and who live their life with intention and have everything based in faith and take great care of themselves and want to pay attention to the important things in life that I think are very, very important. Uh, and that's a really hard realization if you're hearing that right now and you're thinking, uh, yeah, my friends party all the time and they sleep around with everybody and they do drugs all the time and they drink way too much alcohol and they never go to church. It might be fun for like five minutes, but deep, deep down, I kind of know that I don't want to live my life like that. It can be very difficult to walk away from that, but I can promise you it is the best decision that you possibly could make in choosing who you surround yourself with. In our locals chat, Johnny says you are who you surround yourself with and you are who you pay attention to. So even beyond who you are directly surrounding yourself with, with your friends or your coworkers or your significant other, the most important person that you surround yourself with, who you listen to and who you pay attention to matter just as much, especially in this world of independent media, of independent commentary, uh, and of where you are consuming your news and information from. Every single person that's watching this stream, I guarantee you, hasn't turned on corporate news in quite a while, at least a couple of weeks. So thank you guys for choosing this instead. But pay attention to who you're following on social media, what live streams you're watching, what podcasts you're listening to, who you pay attention to, whether you realize it or not, does influence your opinions, your values, your perspective on the world. And while I do believe you should go out of your way to follow people and find people that you disagree with so that you can understand what their intentions are, where they're coming from, and how you can have a real conversation with them, when you're listening to the people that you do agree with, be very, very mindful and careful of the fact that those people could be creating an echo chamber for you and driving you farther and farther and farther into something that you may not necessarily agree with. Don't forget that you don't have to agree with every single thing that I say or another podcast host says or another Instagram influencer says. You can go out of your way to do your own research and who you pay attention to. Those people should be inspiring you to go figure out what you believe, not just telling you that you should blindly believe what I believe. So rule number five, who are you surrounding yourself with? Time to start asking ourselves that question and be aware that you are who you surround yourself with and who you pay attention to. Our last one is a really fun one, and I love talking about this stuff with you guys. We spend a lot of time over on our locals community talking about dating, which is super, super fun. And I love that Nessie said on our YouTube chat, hey, uh, Isabel is life coaching us right now. I kind of feel like I am life coaching you right now, but these are just some lessons I've learned along the way for how to reject all of the lies of culture and live a much, much, much more fulfilling life. So our last rule, rule number six, is start to ask yourself, who am I choosing to love? 
Who is my significant other and what am I looking for out of a dating relationship? I've spent a lot of time over on our series on locals outdated, which unfortunately we missed an episode of um, yesterday because the water went out in my building. So we had to go stay at a hotel and it was like a whole nine yard thing. It was crazy. We got a great episode of Domus coming to you guys tomorrow too, which I'll remind you at the end of the stream. Uh, but we spent a lot of time over on outdated talking about my take on dating and all of the lives that are hitting Generation Z right now in terms of dating and sex and relationships and where we can go to find the truth in a more fulfilling way of life. But but this was also something like having to cut friends out of my life that weren't living according to the values that were most important to me. I've had to learn along the way of looking for somebody with intention that I could see myself spending a life with and expecting better from that person and from myself. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but you do not have to settle for the standards of society in what you are looking for in your relationships. You don't. And if you are settling according to societal standards for what it means to be happy in dating and relationships, you probably are going to be really, really miserable. I love love. I have always loved love and always dreamed of growing up and falling in love and getting engaged and married and being unbelievably happy head over heels in love with my significant other. I therefore am really, really loyal to the people that I date to a fault and have gaslit myself and convinced myself more times than I can count that this person would be so perfect for me if they could just change this one little thing. It's actually a really big thing. That means we are totally on different pages in terms of what we want out of our lives. If I can get this person to fall in love with Jesus the same amount that I'm in love with Jesus, then it'll be great. And we already have a lot of fun together and a lot of the same hobbies and it'll be great. But like he'll get there, right? He'll get there eventually. I just got to give it time. Guess who still hasn't gotten there? I know that, you know, he doesn't treat me very well. He's cheated on me a few times, but he'll get there, right? Like he'll realize that this is eventually what he really wants and he's apologized and he feels really bad about it. And we have so, so, so much fun together and we have all of the same hobbies and generally the same values, I thought anyway. Uh, he'll get there, right? Guess who still hasn't gotten there? He says that he's really politically conservative, but he treats people kind of not that way. And then we get in a lot of arguments about these really important political values that I think really shape your outlook on the world. Like I can probably convince him, right? I can probably change his mind on this issue or this issue or this issue. And then we'll be on the same page and then it's going to be fantastic and, and we'll be happily ever after. We'll get engaged and we'll get married. We'll be happy ever after. Guess who still didn't get it? It's unbelievably difficult, especially when all of the emotions of dating are like wrapped up into one. And this was just my experience, by the way. Other people have dramatically different experiences to pull away from that and realize that God has designed something so much better and perfectly tailored towards you if you are courageous enough to go out and get it. I don't know who needs to be told this today, but you deserve better than the societal standards we have accepted as the norm or even as good in dating and personal relationships in 2023 America and around the world. You deserve better. You deserve better than somebody who's going to text you at 3 a.m. and say you up after ghosting you for two weeks just so that they can hook up with you and not call you again for a month. You deserve better than somebody who says that they are in the talking stage with you and they just want to figure things out. They're not ready to commit to a label because they're kind of also seeing four or five other people at the same time and they just want to figure out what's going to make them the happiest. But you're super fun and you're super cute and I want to have you around and I want to keep hanging out with you. You deserve better than that. You deserve better than somebody who says, I just love you so much that I have to have sex with you right now and we are not waiting because I just can't contain my love for you. You deserve somebody who's going to say that they respect you enough and they care about you enough to wait until you are married. I know that that sounds so cliche and so out of touch with where we are at culturally, but again, I don't know who needs to hear this. Those people are out there. Those people are out there and they will become those people. They will get it and rise to the occasion. If we redefine what the social norms and standards need to be in our most important relationships, there is no coincidence whatsoever that we are the most miserable we've ever been in our personal lives and in dating 
when we live in a culture and society that says we can and should do whatever we want with no strings attached and absolutely zero consequences for our actions. There's no coincidence to me that we are that miserable for that exact reason. We've convinced ourselves that sleeping around, that getting as many abortions as we need to get as a form of birth control, that refusing to settle down, that dating multiple people all at once, that never putting a label on anything because that weighs you down, that all of those things are going to make us happy and they're not. They've made us unbelievably miserable. There was a time when I actually really doubted and wondered if I would ever meet the person that I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with. And I think most young people do feel that. They feel the pressure and they feel this need to settle for whatever situation that they are in right now. And I don't know if you're a boy or a girl struggling with any of this. I don't know what your current situation is. But I'm here to tell you that our last rule and maybe our most important rule for how we can break free of the lies of modern culture and society and embrace something happier and more fulfilling is to demand better, to realize that you deserve better and to courageously go out and look for something that is better. Put it in God's hands and knock on some doors. And if those doors open, then they are the right doors for you. But stop gaslighting and convincing yourselves into thinking that you deserve what culture has deemed to be normal because we all deserve a hell of a lot better. And by the way, this last and most important rule will provide the greatest opportunity for us to impact culture at large with the biggest impact possible. Because when we do choose to find real, lasting, fulfilling, committed love, we will raise that marriage rate again back towards peak high levels, which my generation is really excited about pursuing. We will build beautiful, strong families in a world that is rejecting the very concept of a nuclear family and saying that we should outlaw a nuclear family or prevent that from existing. Strong relationships lead to strong families, which lead to strong communities, which lead to strong societies as a whole. And it comes down to us, to our generation, to embrace something better in every area of our life, but particularly in our most important relationships, to change culture at large so that we're not living in the upside down anymore. We are back to living in reality. And that would make me very, very, very happy. And I'm sure it would make you guys very, very happy as well.